Hello, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Alonzo Duraldi, Christy Lemire. She saw Safe Haven. I didn't, <laughs> but I know what happens, and I can't believe what happens. So we're going to talk about what happens. We're going to spoil Safe Haven. This, so yeah. if you're going to see it, if you want to see it, you don't want to want to know what happens, then stop watching because this is going to be spoiler packed. This is spoiler tastic. We are all spoiler all the time, and there were actual reviews that when it first came out a couple weeks ago, they said, "Okay, we're just going to spoil this <laughs> Screw it. because the ending is nutty." Um, this is based on the Nicholas Sparks book, which I understand that the, the twist is actually nuttier in the book really? than it is in the movie. Oh, wow. um, I had never read a Nicholas Sparks book, and but, we've, but how I'm, many how many movies have you seen? I have seen *Nights in Rodanthe*, *The Notebook*, *A Walk to Remember*. And the one with Zac Efron hauling the big heavy bags of dog food. Uh, which the lucky the one. naked's escaping me. I yeah, can't remember. The lucky, lucky one. one. Um, this is a very Nicholas Sparksy and Nicholas Sparks <laughs> movie directed by Lassie Hallstrom, who also uh, did another Nicholas Dear Sparks John movie. Or? He did Dear John. Josh Dumel and Julianne Hoff, and they are the um, obligatory damaged souls who will find one another and heal each other in a scenic coastal Carolina town. But she has come to town with a secret. Take a look. Why won't you let him get to know you? I've had things happen to me in the past. Open up, <laughs> everything's waiting for you. Did you hear about his wife? She passed away a few years ago. Okay. Maybe I overreacted. Would you like to go canoeing with me? <laughs> canoeing? I like to go canoeing. So, um, so basically, Julianne Huff sees dead people. I'm just gonna put it out there, because that's, that's the twist in this. Um, she has come to town, she and Josh Jamel hook up, and she's very grudging about letting her heart open, oh, but he's again. Josh Jamel with his shirt off, so what are you gonna do? And what woman can resist a widower with kids? <laughs> and they're really cute little moppity kids, too. <laughs> that's um, like, that is, that is, that is yeah. lady bait right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, so you have pretty people, it's all very artfully lighted, but she has Didn't this. Let me guess, he's got like those distressed flannel shirts with the unbuttoned Henley <laughs> underneath, and like a 1940s pickup truck? No, he um, <laughs> he has a Jeep and he runs the corner store. Uh, okay. But he does indeed have those kinds of, of you know, accoutrement, yes, <laughs> the vibe. She has fled Boston and she's cut her hair and hopped on a bus to nowhere and um, and now she's found this life for herself but this guy in Boston is still chasing after her. And it turns out that the guy in Boston chasing after her is actually her husband no! who she thought she killed. No! But he's like the T-1000 and so <laughs> she can't kill him and he comes after her. But all the while, while she's in this tranquil little town, she has this female friend played by Kobe Smulders who follows her around and shows up at opportune times to walk her home to her little tranquil but dilapidated cabin in the woods and it turns out she is the ghost of Josh Jumel's dead wife. No! Who is like wandering around this little town still and oh. she has written a letter to the woman who will one day become the de facto oh, wife and mom boy. in the family and it's labeled to her. So she's the chick flick Tyler Durden. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, a good, that's a good analogy and um, and I went and saw it on a Saturday night by myself because oh. Chris Lemire wouldn't go with me shockingly <laughs> and neither would any of my girlfriends and so that is the depth of lady time yes. when you're going by yourself on a Saturday night to a Nicholas Sparks doing, doing my knitting waiting for the lights to go down <laughs> yes and it begs all these questions like okay were there other pretty blonde women who came through town on the bus who maybe the letter might have been for <laughs> if they'd stuck around long enough was it always Julianne Huff that she was like predestined to be the new mom and does, does she get jealous watching them do it. <laughs> Is she watching life. them do it? <laughs> Just making sure, like, like tell me how to the left a little more. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> now, okay, well, Julianne Huff, it, why? She's really cute. But, but does she bring anything else to the table? Because I, I didn't see this, but I saw, I saw her in Footloose and I saw her in uh, Rock of Ages. And I, I mean, I'm not, I don't find her horrible. I just think she's a bowl of hot nothing. You know? <laughs> no, she's not a bowl of hot nothing. She's very sassy and footloose. And mm -hmm. the fact that she's beautiful and can sing and can dance, maybe they'll bring the acting up to par with the all rest right, of those things. Right, um, I, I want to give her a chance. I, I do. Well, she gets a few more. She gets a few more times. Yes, intentionally in this movie, though, I think she is drawn to be kind of vague because mm -hmm. she's meant to be coming to town with a secret. Right. She's meant to be guarded. Right, and right. And so, yeah, there's not a whole lot to her besides like being sweet and liking children and looking great in a bikini at the beach. <laughs> so go see Safe Haven at your own risk. Um, it's actually not terrible. 
Okay. It's not, I mean, it does what a Nicholas Sparks movie should do. So if you like that and you want that, you'll be, you'll what be fine. Would, what would your number be? I would probably give it like a five. Yeah. It's, it's really low. It's like number 12, it's 12%. Ooh. on Rotten Tomatoes, it's, it's down there. But you know what? Like, embrace the nuttiness of the twist. Have fun with it. Bye.